Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Those of you on TikTok and YouTube platforms, I'm Mr. Clay. I thank the Most High for you. Let's pray. Oh, Most Holy Sanini Nainini. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for allowing us to see this beautiful day, regardless of what condition it is. It's still a day that we're above ground. We thank you for that you have caused us even to rise above our situations. You caused us to find out solutions to what's going on. Yet even our enemies are still the head over us and we're still the tail. Oh, we ask you to restore that which we have caused to be destroyed. We ask you to restore that which we have caused to call happen to us. Ah, we ask you to give tenfold unto those who have caused us and our ancestors even the hurt and the shame that they have caused. Even though we have deserved it, yet they have overstepped their bounds. And we thank you for these things and we ask you to help us begin an industrious, oh, a prosperous people, a people full of wisdom, a people that invented and uh, Oh, just so many things. Our children, give them wisdom. Oh, we can see them now, how they're just so wise and things of this earth. And they can figure out things. And we thank you for them. And we give you the glory and the praise for all that you've done. And we thank you for the prosperity. Yes, yes, and yes. Yes, we are in Exodus chapter 22, Exodus chapter 22. Now, if a man, in verse 1, now, if a man steal an ox or a sheep, now, we got to take this and supplement it in today's thing but you're not going to find that in the laws in no nobody's land if a man steal an ox or a sheep this is from the most high and kill it or sell it he shall restore five oxen for an ox where's that in the egyptians uh mat or whatever you want to call it hmm? you don't you don't know what the world you're talking about they might have something similar but it's not the same if a man shall steal an ox or sheep or or kill it or sell it he shall restore five oxen for an ox four sheep four sheep oh, well that's fair you, you you cause havoc you cause pain and suffering so why not even just just get it over with and just give what you have to give and that is the judgment of the most high if the thief be found breaking up if he be found breaking up trying to get into your get into your storehouse and you mess around and delete him yes and he be smitten that he die there shall no blood be shed for him there's no there's no you don't make no oblations, don't make no sacrifices, don't kill no lambs, no goats, no bullocks for him because he's dead. Okay? Now, he said, if the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood. If he's still alive by the sun, by the time the sun rise, then we, we're going to make, we're going to call on the Most High to help him and make a sacrifice that his sin might be forgiven him. For he should make fuel restitution. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. That is the servitude. That's when a man is sold for seven years. He's given to somebody. They say, well, I, I'm going to pay. And he pays the owner, the, the person who this has happened to. And the man, the man or whoever, the woman that had been found in the house stealing, they serve that person who paid the restitution. So that's how they are sold for their thefts. This is not like today's day. You they, they, they steal from you. You get nothing. You have to have insurance. Yet they be working for the industrial, the prison industrial complex. We put it that way. That uh, they are in cohesion with the government and corporations. But the fact is, is that who's getting the money? The person that was violated is not getting anything. So where does that help anybody? No way. No way. It helps nothing. Here your house breaking up. Here's everything gone. You still paying insurance. Insurance company pay. This is a big scam. Now, let's go. I, I can go on, but I digress. Anyway, verse 4. If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or ass or sheep, he shall restore double. In other words, if it's still alive or if it's still in his hand and he can give it back, he's still going to restore double. <laughs> God going to make it hard for you. Now, if a man shall cause field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put his beast and feed another man's field and the beast, the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard, he shall make restitution. In other words, what you told and what you what you caused to be damaged, you're going to make restitution for that. This is God. This is God. God is fair. The law of the Lord is good. It's pure. Now, if fire break out in verse six and catching thorns that the stack of the corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith. He that kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. 
Hey, if you get caught, you're getting ready to pay. You're going to pay. God's way is right. The law of This is why they song of the law of the Lord. If it is obeyed, if it is constituted in your constitution, if it is in your laws, if it is your law, his law is your law, then you're going to have a blessed people. You're going to be a blessed people. He said, if a man deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of the man's house, if the thief bound, be bound, let him pay double. In other words, you caught him. You're going to pay double. You're going to restore this stuff. We're going to find out how much it costs or what it would take. And, and if you can't pay it, what did he say in the, in the above uh, clause? He said that, hey, you're going to have to go to servitude so you can pay that stuff back. Not like, not like here in, 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 in what they call Babylon. No, 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 where uh, the government and corporations and people put fill their pockets while the thief or the one who caused the, 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 the havoc is, is serving time, but yet the people that were the victims are not even restituted or reparations. Now, we can get to the point where we can go to a bigger thing than this, but we're going to leave it at, 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 at the local standard. But anyway, for all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox, for ass, for sheep, in verse 9, for raiment, for any other manner of lost thing which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall be before the judges, to whom the judges shall condemn, and he shall pay double unto his neighbor. You, know, if you, you give somebody something to keep and say, hey, keep this, you're bound by law. If you agree, you're bound by law in, in ancient Israel, in ancient Bantu. Now you're bound by law. He said, "Now if you if you if you lose it, if you allow somebody to steal it, see they can't tell whether you're lying or not. So you're gonna have to pay." Now if a man deliver unto his neighbor an ass, an ox, a sheep, or any beast of the field, and and it die or be hurt or driven away, seeing and no man seeing it, then shall an oath be of the Lord between them both that he had not put his hand unto his neighbor's good, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. In other words, the owner said, I swear before God, I swear unto the most holy. If he, if he did that, it's going to be good because he now has put himself into some dangerous ground. Now see, here is where God is king. This is where God sees all. God knows all. And if you lie, <laughs> I, I, I hate to see the end of it. Now if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. Now, if it's stolen, because he didn't protect it. Now, if it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness that he shall not make good that which was torn. In other words, you can't tell if somebody lying. Now, people lie so much, ah, especially those of official business. Now, now he shall not make good that which was torn, okay? Because he brought it back and said, see, I did not do this. This did this. Now, if a man borrow all of his neighbor and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. Now, if you're going to borrow and you, you, you return the piece back broken and everything, you should buy a new one. As a matter of fact, you might as well want to buy two new ones because you borrowed it. You didn't protect it. You didn't make sure this thing was oiled or whatever. Or whatever you borrowed from your neighbor, whether it be money or whatever, you have to return it the way you got it. And that with interest if it's call if it calls for that. Now if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be an hard thing. In other words, if you have an animal or something like that a lot more, you be with it and it just broke, then there's nothing you can do about it, okay? It came for his hire. Okay. Now it says, now if a man entice a maid, now let's get into this. A thief is not worthy of death. Again, reiterate, a thief is not worthy of death simply because the fact that a thief has to repay see right now our industrial complex is really ripping the average american off because that thief is not paying for what he or she has done when they, if they are found guilty most of the time they're guilty before innocent but anyway if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her and he shall surely endow her to be his wife or is the bride price? If her father surely refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Okay, he took a virgin. That's, that's, she belongs to her father until he gives her away. Period. Sells her, gives her away, or whatever he does. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. These are commandments. There's more than ten. <laughs> well, yeah, 
hell? Yes. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. One witch, 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 witch that uses things. Now, to the uh, definition of witch. Now, that's one in itself. Some say, well, the, the they came to Africa a witch. A witch is one who calls one from the dead, clairvoyant. One who tries to uh, conjure things to manipulate your mind or whatever. I mean, using the incantations of devils. Now, we have to define that to the right thing. Now, everything that Africa or any other people do that's not according to your New Testament is, doesn't mean that it is a witch. They just did it different. Okay? Now, whosoever lies with a beast shall surely be put to death. Bestiality is what he's saying. That that is covered. That 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 is you know where thou shalt. That would fall under adultery. Anything apart from marriage, any sexual act apart from marriage is adultery, except for if the maid is not betrothed and you go lie with her. Now he says, he that sacrifices unto any god, save unto the most high only, he shall be utterly destroyed. In other words, you, 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 some of you make your ancestors your God. You just might as well admit it. Stop lying to yourself and others. You do that. What can your ancestors do for you? They're dead. They had no power while living. What power would they have while dead? Come on now. If they were wicked while living, there ain't going to be nothing but devils while dead. All right? Come on here. Somebody has deceived you greatly throughout the years. Now, thou shalt not vex a stranger nor oppress him, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Now, a lot of I can say a lot of places have have shown hospitality, but you still have to be careful whom you show hospitality to, because they will take your kindness for weakness. They will overtake you. Some will overtake your home, your lands, and everything else. You have to be circumspect in how you do things and watch. Now. And my wrath shall wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and wives shall be your shall be widows, and your children fathers. This is what the Most High is saying, quote unquote. Now, he says, now if if you if you lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer; neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. In other words, if you're gonna be a lender, <laughs> oh, you heathen got something coming here. If you're gonna be a lender. And those of you who know the Most High, and you live to the poor of the people, you know they don't have a job, or they can bear. You know they, they can only pay the minimum. You know they they, they they have very little, but yet they say they can pay, and you know they can pay. But yet you're going to cause usury and cause more havoc and more burden upon them. God said, "No, you you can't do. You don't not supposed to do that." Those of you who do it, charge usury for what you lend people, whether you be a, a lender in any official or unofficial. God's going to get you for that. You, you, you're not going to, you, you're going to be judged. It's already a judgment here. He says, but if, if thou, art, if thou art all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver them in verse 26, delivered unto him by the, by that the sun goeth down. In other words, give it back to him so he can be warm. Because sun go down, it's going to get cool. He need his raiment. For that is his covering only. And in his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep? It shall come to pass. When he crieth unto me, I will hear him, for I am gracious. If he cry unto the Lord, help me. I, I, I couldn't pay him, so I give him my coat to hold until, until you know, nighttime, because I need to put it on. Now, some a lot of people were honest. Poor people can be very honest, because they want to be where they can prosper, even before the Most High. Thou shalt not revile the gods. In other words, the kings, the magistrates, they're not the powers that be. That's what he's saying. Don't revile, don't, don't revile them, nor curse the rule of thy people. Just leave it alone. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits of thy liquors, and the firstborn of thy sons thou give unto me. In other words, there was a way that God had you to offer those things, and they are found also in the law. We will cover that. It will be covered later. Now, likewise thou shalt do with the oxen and with thy sheep seven days it shall be with his dam his mama sucking the milk and the eighth day thou shalt give it to me and the male will be what on the eighth day a male human of the bantu even the elect shall be circumcised that is important ye shall be holy men unto me neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field ye shall cast it to the dogs. Let the dogs eat it. In other words, as far as getting back to the eighth day, 
many times if you if you have a, a system or a belief system or you have a, a they call it a cap and babies are born someone should be medically qualified to circumcise this child because the hospitals are not going to do it they, they they do it at their own convenience for you to be straight with the most high. Someone, instead of you, some of you church folks, y'all pay the pastor and pay everybody else. But the eighth day of that child, that per the person that you are paying to be available on that eighth, on any child born in the camp or whatever, should be circumcised. And not like they do. You don't, you don't suck the blood off the baby's uh, private after circumcision. <laughs> That's not cool. Okay? Now, he said, and ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. You cast at the dog. You're going to be clean. You're going to be clean. You're going to be holy. You're going to be righteous. He said, you're going to do these things, and this thing will make you holy and clean. Hey, and it's good. The law of the Lord is good. It's fair. And with that, I'm going to say, peace.